Well, as, as far as I remember, he, he packed them up, packing cases, nailed it all down, uh, mixed with <coughs> sawdust or whatever he could get hold of, uh, dried reeds, or, and it was the whole lot went on a packet ship back to eventually arrived to poor Professor Henslow in Cambridge, who had uh, sheds full of stuff from Darwin, um, which he didn't unpack until Darwin got back a lot of it. Um, and then the fossils went to Richard Owen, Owen the great anatomist at the British Museum, Natural History, the Natural History Museum. And Owen and Darwin at that time were, were in fact great friends. Owen adopted Darwin when he got back. Uh, there wasn't much problem, it seems to me, a remarkably efficient packet system with the Navy boats going back and forth. Uh, very few letters got lost. Uh, but it did help to be nominally in the Navy and to have a lot of money, uh, as Darwin did. If you compare him with poor Alfred Russell Wallace, who had to earn his way and his specimens had to be sent back to an agent and sold at a penny a time, often butterflies. Uh, he, Wallace, took his own packing cases, the bulk of his collections, or at least half, over half of them, back with him to England when he finally left South America after I think it was four years. And uh, three quarters of the way, the ship caught fire and he was on an open raft. Didn't even save his notebooks, just one notebook with him. Um, disaster. So, as always, it helped to be, to be rich. And Wallace was saved, but the only comfort, um, looking at it from a historical point of view, was that Wallace I'm sure he would have settled down like Darwin and just sorted through his collections and his specimens and wrote a much better book about them than he did. He would have stayed in England probably, um, like Bates did. But he felt compelled to start all over again and that's why he made his great expedition, his eight years sojourn in the islands of the Malay Archipelago and independently discovered the principle of evolution by natural selection. So you see, even, even an ostensibly boring story, like how somebody packs up their specimens, is actually fascinating. There's a lot to be said for the 19th century.